Hello, my name is William Michael of the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and earlier this evening, I announced that um, I was about to get back into uh, my work of publishing uh, recorded lessons, uh, teaching the content of the courses in the classical Catholic curriculum. But as I, as I started to get back to that work this evening, I started to think about what my, what my goals really should be in the work of teaching. And I started to think of the different situations, different students, different challenges um, that, I, that I normally have to work with. And, and, I, and I, I wanted to spend some time uh, reflecting on these things and, and really develop for myself a, a clear sense of, of what uh, my, my goals and objectives were for this school year. And as I started to uh, meditate on, on this topic and, and, and think about these questions, I, I felt like I started to make some progress and had a, I had a helpful meditation and, and I was writing things out and I, I said, you know what, I should probably uh, put this into a video before I get into teaching this year um, to, to make it a focus and, and because I think that other teachers and other parents would, would find it somewhat helpful. So I'd like to um, spend some time in this video talking about the role of a teacher, the purpose of a teacher, and in, in how that relates to, to different types of students that, that we as teachers and parents have to deal with. My first question, as I, as I think through the lessons, to be honest, um, teaching is difficult for me because uh, I'm a gifted and motivated student and I've never really needed a teacher. And so when I think about teaching, I always have this dilemma. I, I feel like it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. I think to myself, who really needs this? Why am I doing this? This is a waste. This is unnecessary. Um, and it's hard for me to appreciate the role of a teacher, even though I am a teacher. It's hard for me to really value the role of a teacher because in my education and work, I really haven't had the benefit of many influential teachers. I had a couple mentors who helped me at crucial points in my in my early adult life, but, but most of my academic work has been private and motivated by my own desires. Um, and so I have a hard time thinking of how to teach and be a teacher. Um, so I wanted to meditate on this because I really wanted to get it clear in my mind what the purpose of my teaching videos uh, was to be so, so I, could, I, I could make them as helpful as possible. And and what I asked was, what is the purpose of a teacher? What is the role of a teacher? And again, this is something I struggle with because I haven't been dependent on or helped much by teachers in my own academic experience. Um, and what I, what I came up with as I was thinking is that the purpose of a teacher, the purpose of a teacher is to promote learning, to promote learning among those who would not learn without the motivation and assistance that comes from a teacher. So the purpose of a teacher, the role of a teacher, is to promote learning among students who would not move forward in learning without the help, without the motivation and assistance of a teacher. That's the primary purpose of a teacher. And as I was meditating on this, I, I thought to myself, there are, there are two basic characteristics that in four different combinations identify four different types of students. And I'm not saying this is any kind of scientific division or classification of, system, of students. This is just a simple observation after some uh, meditation on the topic, but the two basic qu 
qualities or characteristics of different students are aptitude and interest. These two different things. And the, the church and the catechism even teaches that these are, these are signs of devotions in our lives that normally as we approach um, our vocation, as we discern our vocation, we find that there is this combination of aptitude and interest, aptitude meaning ability or, or skill in a certain area, and interest being a will and desire for that thing. And these two qualities, aptitude and interest, are, are present and not present in different students. And as I was thinking about these, I thought of four examples of saints from history who I think could be considered representatives of these four different kinds of students. And again, this isn't some kind of science that I'm, that I'm proposing here, just a, a helpful meditation. The first saint that I thought of was St. Thomas Aquinas, who from his youth was gifted and motivated. He was apt and he was interested. He possessed both of the characteristics of a great student. He was apt and he was interested. He has checks in both of these characteristics. The second student that I thought of was Saint Augustine. He was very apt, he was very gifted as a young student, but he was not interested in the pursuit of, of Christian faith and true learning. He was apt but he was not interested. The third example I thought of was St. John Vianney. St. John Vianney desired to be a priest and was interested in true learning, but he was not apt. He was not skilled. He was not gifted as a student. He lacked aptitude, but he had interest. And then the fourth example uh, that I thought of was St. Joseph Cupertino. If you know his story, he was um, kind of dopey, always in trouble. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about him uh, later on. But he was neither apt nor interested in learning, St. Joseph of Cupertino. And so if we think about these four different saints and how they relate to one another in these two different characteristics, I think we can make a general sketch of four different types of students that we, we have to deal with as teachers and parents. And now, while obviously, you know, in my case, I'm nothing like Thomas Aquinas, um, he's an example of the student who is both apt and interested. And I was an apt and interested student, and I've had students who are apt and interested, who are, who are uh, you know, gifted and capable of doing great studies and who are interested and zealous for those studies. I've had those students. I was a student like that myself. Thomas Aquinas is sort of the model of that, uh, of that gifted and interested or apt and interested student. I've also had students like St. Augustine who were very gifted but who just didn't care, who... who studying and learning uh, the true faith and, and true philosophy just wasn't on their radar. I've had students like St. Augustine, gifted but not interested. I've had students like St. John Vianney, innocent and good but not gifted. I, I think a lot of times in, in homeschool circles, these become the kids who are sort of awkward and nerdy. They're interested in doing good things. They often talk about religious vocations, um, but they're really not good students. Uh, so that's a third kind. And then uh, St. Joseph of Cupertino is just a headache. You know, what do you do with this kid? Um, and, and trying to figure out what to do with him is very difficult. Now, as I continue to, to meditate on this and think about, okay, so... So what are the needs of these different students? What are the needs? I thought of four different things that, that students need that a teacher uh, can supply. 
four different needs that a teacher can supply. And these are the four needs. The first, the first need is study material or content. First benefit that a, a good teacher offers to students is access to quality study materials. And it's, it's an un, underestimated duty of a teacher to research and establish quality study materials. It's, it's, a, it's a skill and, and a responsibility that I, that I don't think parents or schools pay enough attention to how important it is to have the right materials. And so the first responsibility, the first need of students, first responsibility of a teacher is to provide uh, quality study materials. The second need is motivation. Teacher needs to be a motivator. Students need motivation. Now, a student like Thomas Aquinas, who has interest, who has interest, does not need to be motivated. Does not need to be motivated. No one needs to tell me, even when I was a teenager, when I was in college as a 19-year-old, no one needed to tell me to get to the library and put a whole day in studying. I was there. I wanted to be there. And I've had students like that. I've had students who were up at 6.30 in the morning, ready to go, and they would study until they went to bed. Um, those students don't need motivation. They don't need to be motivated. But a student like, a student like St. Augustine, a student like St. Augustine who has the ability, what he needs from a teacher is motivation. And so you see here I have a check under motivation. A student like St. Augustine needs a teacher who can motivate. And motivation comes in a number of different forms. It comes through exhortation, a positive encouragement and rousing to work, encouraging him, you know, providing him with an understanding of the benefits that are available and, 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 and stirring him up to, to desire those things. That's one form of motivation. Another form of motivation is the ability to get in someone's face and chew them out and warn them of the dangers of not pursuing these things. Um, and then there's collaboration in motivation, uh, a teacher collaborating with parents in setting conditions for different benefits or punishments made available to the student, the parent and teacher collaborating. And then there's real life, having the exhortations and warnings of a teacher experienced by a student if he chooses not to listen. Um, so all of these things come together and combine as, as part of the work of a teacher in motivating a student. The third, the third need of students that a, that a teacher is responsible to provide is, is assistance, is assistance. And I like to think of assistance as helping a crippled man to walk. Um, you know, what that person needs is assistance. They actually need you to provide him with legs. They need, you to, they need you to help carry them because they cannot carry themselves. That's the idea of assistance. And so with a student like John Vianney, he has desire, he has a good will, he's interested, he wants to learn, but he simply doesn't have the aptitude, he's not gifted, he doesn't have the ability to learn easily, and he really needs someone to carry him along and help him. Um, so assistance is the third responsibility of a teacher. And then lastly, another one that I think is, is underestimated is companionship. Um, students need companionship because study is a lonely business. And the more devoted we are to study, the more we enter into solitude and, and we become more and more appreciative of true companionship, companionship in a life of wisdom. And again, I think that's another responsibility of teachers that's underestimated and neglected in modern education. So four needs of students uh, that... that can also be considered four responsibilities of a good teacher. And those are quality study material, 
motivation, assistance, and companionship. Um, one of my one of my students, who I would consider um, an Aquinas-like student, uh, recently told me in a in a conversation we were having that during his years of study, the most valuable thing that I gave to him was just conversation. He talked about chats we had, discussions we had, and how those discussions, just being available and having discussions and talking about things, how that was so important in his life. And again, I think things like that uh, get neglected. I know I, I don't think much of them. I take them for granted. But to hear him say that, when I considered him a first-class student, uh, to hear him say that it was just simple things like conversations that he found really helpful as a student, um, that's one part of teaching that I think gets neglected, the importance of, of being a companion. Think of what God says in the Garden of Eden. He says it is not good for a man to be alone. Um, the, the work of study produces solitude, and it pushes a man deeper and deeper into solitude, and that's, that's one of the crosses and challenges that has to be uh, endured or carried by anyone who, who will pursue wisdom and study, and to have someone in that solitude who's not a distraction, who doesn't tempt you away from your good disciplines and practices, but who's there as a friend and a supporter, um, that's, that's a difficult thing to find in that true companionship in the life of studies. So these four things, study materials, motivation, assistance, and companionship. And now as we, we look at these different students, we see Thomas Aquinas, he doesn't need motivation. He doesn't need any assistance, but he does need two things. He does need quality study materials to be prepared for him by, by a teacher, and he does need companionship. Those are important for a student like Thomas Aquinas. A student like St. Augustine, he doesn't need assistance. He doesn't need assistance. He has all of the ability, but what he does need are quality study materials. He needs motivation, and it's a, it's a rare teacher who can provide that motivation, especially when you have a student who's gifted and is cool. Um, it's difficult to find a teacher who can influence a student who's, who's cool and popular, maybe handsome, maybe even from a wealthy family. It's, it's hard to find a teacher who can get into a kid's mind and heart who's, who's like St. Augustine. A lot of times they have to learn the hard way as they enter into adulthood. But there are teachers who can influence kids like that growing up. And so a student like Augustine needs quality study materials, does not need assistance, needs motivation, and needs companionship. Third, a student like St. John Vianney, um, he needs quality study materials just like everyone. He, he doesn't need motivation. He doesn't need motivation. He is motivated. He wants to learn. He, want, he has good desires, but he does not have the ability, and he needs assistance. It's like, as I said, like helping a man who's crippled to walk. He needs the strength of the teacher to assist him because he doesn't have that strength. He needs assistance, and he needs companionship as he goes through his years of study and formation and enters into his adult life and even gets going in his adult life. Um, it's worth noting real quick that normally I develop these kinds of relationships with my students who become very close and as they transition into adulthood they usually leave me and go off into their adult vocation uh, and we stay in touch. And we stay in touch and, and a lot of times they need me for, for, for encouragement, they need me for support, they need me for advice, and so on. And then little by little, they start to wean themselves off of that support and companionship, and they become independent adults. So that's a process that begins early on in their education and continues even after their education ends. 
as they get off into their adult life and start to transition, uh, they still like to keep in touch with that old teacher who can give them advice, who they trust, who they have a relationship with, who can help them um, with professional questions, academic questions, but they slowly wean off that teacher. And that's one of the that's one of the sad things about being a teacher is, is seeing those students move away. But that's the, that's the vocation and duty of a teacher. And then lastly, we have this Joseph Cupertino character. And I want to talk about him a little bit. <clears throat> if you don't know the story of St. Joseph, um, he was a boy born in a poor family. He was stupid and he was a troublemaker. Um, I, I think he had a, a, a history of, of, of anger problems and, and things like that. But he was, he was dumb and annoying. But he had this unique situation where God gave him these, these ecstasies or these, these you know, apparitions of, of whatever kind. And so he was a, he was a gift, spiritually gifted individual. But intellectually, he was deficient. And personally, he was deficient. And so he's kind of this weird, um, weird kid that's impossible to help, and yet at the same time is receiving extraordinary graces. And again, I've had students like this. I've had students who were spiritual, who had this interesting spiritual life, but were obnoxious to be with and they were dumb and they're sort of the 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 greatest burden for for teachers because there's just no way to figure out what to do with them now on the other hand there are also students like like Joseph of Cupertino who are who are not spiritually gifted who are just evil and they you know, they're they're not intelligent they don't have good desires and they don't have that grace. And those are the worst of all kids, worst of all students. So a kid like that, a kid who's got, who just doesn't seem to have ability or interest, uh, the grace is not in our control. There's nothing that we can do about that. The teacher can't give grace. Um, and so there's two different kinds of this fourth student. They need quality study materials from a teacher. They need a teacher who can provide them with the best stuff to study in. And this also sometimes needs to be adjusted on an individual basis by a, by a skillful teacher to say, I think this student should focus on this. I think it would be better for him to, to ignore this subject and give more attention to this subject. That kind of customization is another part of this duty of a teacher to provide quality study materials for individual students. But this fourth type of student who is neither apt nor interested needs quality study materials, needs motivation, needs assistance, and needs companionship. And again, the problem with this fourth student is it's difficult to be a companion to a student like this. And that's one of the challenges of teachers. So I think this is a helpful way of thinking about different students and their abilities, uh, their interests, and their needs. And that explains and helps us to understand the responsibilities of a teacher. Now, as we consider these, <clears throat> the, real, the real work of a teacher, the real focus of the work of the teacher is on these two middle students. <clears throat> these two middle students, these Augustans and Viannis, they're the ones that teachers uh, really have to focus on because those are the ones the teachers can help the most. This fourth type of student, his life is really going to be dependent on the influence of grace in his life. A teacher can befriend him, a teacher can try to help, but usually there are just so many needs that, that the teacher can't do everything. The teacher is not God. And at some point, 
that student is going to need some kind of divine intervention or provision in his life to save him from trouble. And sometimes we see that come, as in the life of St. Joseph, <clears throat> and sometimes we don't see that grace come and we see some kind of tragic end. But <clears throat> teachers can try to help these students, but as I said, a teacher is not God. He can't, can't overcome all of these needs um, because there just simply isn't enough time or resource to allow a teacher to do that. The, the Aquinas, that elite type of student who's apt and interested, really doesn't need much of a teacher. Really needs more of, as I said, just someone to provide quality materials, more of a consultant and a companion. Uh, that's a very different role, uh, dealing with a student like that. But these two, <clears throat> these two students in the middle, uh, the Augustine type student who's gifted but not interested, um, he really depends on the need of a teacher who's able to get into his head and motivate him. And a student like John Vianney, who has good desires, but without the assistance of a teacher is just never going to make it, he too is dependent on a skillful teacher. So, as I said, I, I often struggle with this question of what is the role? What, what, what is my job as a teacher? What am I supposed to do? Uh, what, what, what should I really focus on? It's something I, I really do struggle with because, as I said, I was that kind of student who didn't need a teacher. You know, to give you an example, um, <clears throat> I, I used to get 100% or even higher if there were curves on my exams in college. And finally, my, my professors gave me permission to not even come to class anymore because I didn't need to be there. All I needed to know was what books and pages needed to be studied and when the exam was, and I would come in and get an A. And so I was exempt from attendance in college because of my ability to, to do well on my own, to study independently. But I did need teachers. I did need someone to, to, to show me what to study, to give me the study materials, to give me direction. And as I said, I had a couple of professors um, one in, in classics and history and another in education that were there at crucial points in my, in my studies in college to, to direct me like that. So I did need the help of teachers as mentors, but I didn't need somebody to, to motivate me or assist me in those studies. But what I did enjoy with both of those professors was real companionship. They were professors who used to call me on the phone and who called themselves friends, or called me a friend. I enjoyed that companionship, and I enjoyed the help of their expertise to provide me with study materials and subjects that I hadn't studied before. So I experienced that kind of a, a teacher. I was that kind of a student. <clears throat> and as that kind of a student, sometimes I have a hard time um, not just getting irritated with students like Augustine who just don't have the, the right desires or aren't interested in study. Um, I, I, I really think that they should motivate themselves. And, and also students like Vianney who I, you know, sometimes I'll question if they should even be in school in the first place. And a student like St. Joseph Cupertino, I'll, I'll, I'll consider him just to not be, not be, uh, you know, qualified to be a student. And so, so I, this is a personal thing I wrestle with as a teacher, just understanding the role of a teacher <clears throat> when I myself wasn't dependent on teachers. But this meditation has helped me to really, really focus and see uh, clearly what the role of a teacher is. And as I said before, the role of a teacher is to promote learning among those who would not learn without motivation and assistance from a skilled teacher. And we see that primarily in the experience of the Augustans and Vianney's. So I think that that's, that's a helpful um, meditation. I know I, I feel like I have a clear 
sense of, of mission and purpose as I get into teaching this year, um, thinking of these personas, as it were, these four different types of students that I have to deal with. There are Aquinases that I have to deal with, um, and I have a clear sense of what they need. They need me to provide them with quality materials to study, and they need, they need me to provide them with companionship as they go through these studies and accept this life of solitude that, that study requires. There are Augustines who need me to motivate them, um, to, to admonish them when they're being lazy and, and making bad decisions, and to try and work to find ways to motivate them, to understand the benefits of these studies and, and, and gain a taste for them. Then there are Vianis who um, are the good kids who, who want the right things and have good desires, but they just aren't too bright and they need assistance. They need, they need help from a teacher. They need things to be explained. They need illustrations. They need time. Uh, they need time to work through things because it just takes them longer to get the work done. And then lastly, there are Cupertinos who um, I can do all that I can for. Um, they need the same things as other students, but ultimately their lives are going to be dependent, at least academically, their lives are going to be dependent on grace and how grace intervenes in their lives and provides for them. Joseph Cupertino ended up being a priest, um, was able to finish the required schooling and things like that almost by miracle. Um, so that's a good example of how it can happen sometimes. Um, but there are others who, who, who go downhill quickly and eventually crash and burn. Or, you know, we don't have to put it such a negative. There are some who just don't have a vocation in any kind of intellectual or academic field, and they go on into some mechanical art and live happily ever after. Um, a good place to, to read about that is in, is in uh, the book of Sirach. Chapter 38, the second half of the chapter, talks about two different kinds of men. The scribe, whose life is devoted to the pursuit of wisdom, and the common worker, who uh, you know, doesn't pursue those things, but has his mind wrapped up in his own unique craft or art or business, and how they're all necessary. So, sometimes we have to struggle with kids during their schooling years, and they go on to live prosperous, happy, healthy lives um, because they're called to a mechanical occupation and schooling just isn't their thing. So we have to keep all of that in mind as teachers. And like I said, we can't be everything to the Cupertinos. We just can't. There isn't enough time or energy or resource uh, to do that. We can help as much as we're able, but we have to draw a line at some point. And as I said, we're not God. I can't, I can't, I can't change, you know, a leopard's spots. But the, the focus of our effort as teachers is going to be on the Augustans and Viannis of the world. They're really the students for whom teachers exist. They're really the students who are either given the opportunity by a great teacher to become a great intellectual uh, and to serve in learned professions because teachers can help them to overcome their weaknesses. Um, and they're the most rewarding of students, too, when they do succeed. And everyone knows that their success was owed to the influence of, of great teachers that helped them along the way. Um, and then, God willing, we run into an Aquinas and really... It was the Aquinases that I created the Classical Liberal Arts Academy to serve because, like I said, I was a student like that, and I know what it was like being in school. It was dreadful. Being in school was boring. The teachers, you know, weren't helpful. I was often in trouble because I just had nothing to do. And when I decided to leave private school teaching, my primary mission was to create a study program for the Aquinases out there who needed to be challenged, who needed to be provided with quality study materials that really help them and challenge them to grow and, and fulfill their potential because it doesn't exist. If you look at other study programs outside the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, it's coloring books. It's just, it's, it's busy work. 
And it's that that I wanted to try to, to fix in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy, and I know that we've done that. So anyway, <clears throat> as I get into teaching this year, I'm, I'm looking forward to focusing on the true purpose of teaching, which is to promote learning among those students who, uh, without the motivation and assistance of a skilled teacher, wouldn't be able to succeed. So I hope that's a helpful motiv motivation. As I said, this isn't some kind of psychological science or theory or anything like that. Uh, just a simple, practical motivation to help parents and teachers think about different kids, think about strengths and weaknesses, think about different needs, and what kind of teacher is needed, what kind of parent is needed to work with those kids to help them become all that they can be. So I hope that's helpful. God bless your studies.